what we're doing, it does require a little bit of patience and that, you know, these things can fail. But I think we're actually interested in producing that failure because so much of technology in the last 20 years has been about what's possible. Um, and things have become increasingly immaterial that I think to sort of focus on what's not possible, like at what point are things not possible anymore, is interesting. When I went to graduate school, I'm a real model maker, but I went to graduate school and nobody made models. It was a paperless studio, so everything was done in the computer. And I loved it. I really liked the experience, but in terms of how to translate the work, I was sort of at a loss at the end of it. And this technique of using machines and tools to sort of cut into material um, is really the way you sort of go between the computer and material. But oftentimes, because that process is so limited or formulaic in terms of how you get things out of the computer, um, things become cliche pretty quickly. So what I was trying to do is just use, you know, there's clearly a sort of laser cutter process, a CNC milling process, but I also wanted to use a sort of property of the material itself. So this feathering seems to be a sort of biological diagram, but it sort of fits into a larger conceptual framework that I have, which is about how materials really fracture a certain way. Like in geology, you identify minerals by breaking them and seeing how they fracture. Um, and I thought the fact that this material is sort of falling apart and splintering is an interesting way to call attention to the fact that there's something else going on aside from just the translation from the computer to the model. So my project now really focuses with how you take a simple material diagram. In this case, it's sort of rolled and bent and folded plywood and apply it at multiple scales. So I have some things which just exist at the scale of the sample itself, just sort of built up. Then I have a few larger scale pieces which require it to get translated. So you understand it not literally as a one-to-one -one anymore, but as a sort of extrapolated scalar sample. So I, don't, I played around for a while trying to find something which would give us results. And then we, when we played with patterns, and then we got this pattern which sort of, it, it did something, you know? Like you could really see it. It sort of filtered light in a certain way. And it was a material, so it could inherently be structural as well. Um, so in that case, um, it sort of started with the pattern and the material. So definitely there's this relationship between what I want to happen or expect to happen, and then what the material itself will do. So, I mean, there are some tests downstairs that are broken. I mean, I thought something would work. We put it together and it all snapped and fell apart. And so then we've got to go back in and like change the radius and sort of neutralize or negotiate like what we're drawing and what it will do and get it to work right. Um, this always happens and this is sort of the notion of a, a mock-up. So I think it gets back to issues of representation in architecture. So often uh, we'll either make a drawing or we'll make a model, um, but the model can be considered quite literally just an image, a smaller image of what the building looks like, even if it's in three dimensions, whereas a mock-up is really more of a test, where you're like really testing something to make sure it works, not necessarily in terms of how it looks, but really how it works. So it could be a structural capacity or um, it could be a light capacity, but really material capacities, right? Um, and so all the things I've done, I try to consider them mock-ups. And I think what that really comes down to is getting something to do something, right? So it's not just a sort of thing that sits there, but it might prop itself up in a certain way, which has some relationship to the material we've used. 
And like if we change the thickness of the material, it would sort of change the macroscopic organization of the whole. It would it wouldn't function anymore. So I liked the idea, like very much with wood especially, I've played with different thicknesses and thinnesses of it. And then what is like clearly based on those tests, those radius tests, if we use thicker material, we've got to use wider radiuses. So the material we use has like a direct dialogue with the way the outcome of the project presents itself. Yeah.